All right, it is Friday, November 29th, 2019. It is the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. So of course, we're out doing some uh, Black Friday hiking. So where are we exactly? It's a great question. I'm glad I asked. So we are actually going to do the Blackburn Vista and Powder Mill Trail uh, on the outskirts of the, I guess, the northern part of the Red River Gorge sort of geological area. Now, I, I would like to give a quick shout out to the Red River Underground Channel. Those guys over there um, recently did a video about this. So I'm basically going to try to recreate the, the route that they took. Uh, we came back on this Hatton Ridge Road, which is uh, the last sort of segment that you got to come down on. It's about two and a half miles, and you can see the road behind me there. Um, it's his borderline high clearance vehicle required, not quite. Um, we managed it in a Hyundai Sonata, but um, your mileage may vary a little bit. I uh, certainly wouldn't come in here with a Corvette because uh, you won't get very far. But um, yeah, so if you've got uh, a four-wheel drive or even something with just a little bit of high clearance, you'd probably be fine. So back here behind me, you can see, is the uh, cemetery. Um, and there's a gate uh, right over here. And uh, so when you get to this gate, this is basically where you want to park. And then we'll figure out where to go from here. While both the parking area and the trailhead are in the Daniel Boone National Forest, they're not actually in the Red River Gorge geological area. They're just northwest of that. So let me dial this in visually for you so you can kind of see where we are. We come in from the northwest along Highway 713 or State Route 713 there, and we'll make a right onto a gravel road right up here. Now this comes down and does a hairpin turn onto Hatton Ridge Road, which again is still a basically a gravel road. And it's up on this high ridge. This is about a two and a half mile drive down this ridge until you come to basically the dead end on this road uh, where there's a gate right there. There'll be a, uh, the Hatton Cemetery on the right hand side and you can park right there. And that's where we will begin the hike. The road kind of continues, but it's actually really not designed for cars at that point. Um, uh, so we continue through the gate and we hike south on that road for about one and a half miles, just a little shy of one and a half miles. And on the left hand side of the road or trail, you'll see a sign marking the 238 Powder Mill Branch Trail. So we'll head off to the left here on Powder Mill Branch Trail and we'll follow that trail down uh, along the path for about 1.2 miles or so and we'll get to this junction right here that I will show you later in the video and we'll hang a left on this junction that takes us to the powder mill arch. It goes back along the creek, does a crossing of the creek and takes you up the little hillside to the powder mill arch. Now basically after this we'll just backtrack the route we came back up to the road and then we will hang a left back on the road and head south a little bit further just a little over a tenth of a mile approximately and then there will be a little bit of a clearing on the right hand side and you'll see a clear trail going up off to the right into the pine trees and that's the Blackburn Vista Trail and it takes you along this high ridge out to the Blackburn Vista Point out here so that's really only another you know a tenth of a mile uh, from the 238 trailhead and then the Blackburn Vista Trail itself is only about half a mile or so from the uh, from the trailhead so all told, once you do this route and then go back the way we came, all the way back up Hatton Ridge to the parking area, this is about a six and a half mile hike approximately, give or take a tenth of a mile. All right, so we're going to be traveling along this continuation of the road we came in on here through the gate for a little while. And we should be getting a junction up here at some point where we will go to the left toward Powder Mill, but we'll see how far that gets down the road. Check out this cool leash. It's like a hands-free leash. It's got all this 
shock cord right here. And then it attaches to this thing around my waist. And as you can see, it's really secure. And there's another one of these little eyelets over here if you wanted to hang something off the little waistband wheel. But I'll tell you what, especially when you have a larger dog, and this, she's not even all that big, but you know, 45 pound dog, and you want to have your hands free, this makes a huge difference in your quality of life on the trail. <laughs> really like this thing. All right. We left the uh, the parking area at about 12.30. It is now 1.05, but I uh, probably wasted about 15 minutes uh, going uh, about a quarter of a mile past this, this junction. <laughs> I swear I was looking for the sign the entire time we were on this road. As you can see, we're still on this sort of continuation of Hatton Ridge Road. But um, yeah, somehow I walked right by this stupid thing. And yet, there it is, plain as day. Really can't miss it, except I did. So anyway, uh, we are going to head down that way. So coming from the parking lot, normally this would be about a, uh, I would give it a 15 to 20 minute walk at a, just a moderate pace. And uh, we're going to head down on Powder Mill Trail, which is a little, as you can see, a little veer off the left side of the trail. All right, now that we've come down off the ridge, um, it's kind of like a little, almost like a little peninsula here. We have a couple of creeks converging on either side. And um, so right here, this would be, uh, we came down the, the direction behind you, <laughs> or in front of me, came down this way. So here off to the left, there's a, a little creek crossing that appears to be another trail that goes up off the left. So according to the Red River Underground guys, we will continue on over this way and stay to the right. But I'll tell you, with all of the uh, leaves down, man, it makes all the little, um, all the little gotchas, rocks and roots and things like that, really impossible to even see ahead of time. So you got to take your time uh, this time of year if you're coming down. All right, let's get at it. So just off of the. Uh, main trail still. We haven't taken the last junction off to the left to head toward the arch, but you get a sense that there's some crevices here off to the left. But here's a sinkhole. Goes down a pretty good way, so you wouldn't want to slip down in there. There did appear to be a little pink marker. You can catch it right there. Kind of pointing the way for something to look at. I guess I'm guessing that's all that's trying to tell us. So we're going to continue up this hill. And hopefully we can find that junction off to the left that takes us to the arch. Pretty aggressive uphill. Really only 60, 70 yards from uh, the other sinkhole at most. But right at the top, I can get a better vantage point of this. But stay close. Yeah. That just goes down and down. Wonderful. That one is really deep. You play hell getting out of that without help and a rope. All right. So we're only about 50 yards past that. Uh, deep sinkhole and uh, shortly after that we we uh, encountered really the only other couple of people on this trail actually we were parked right next to them in that cemetery parking area and they gave us some uh, assurance here that we have not yet missed the junction and um, so apparently the junction will be fairly obvious we have two little stream crossings and then the junction will be on the other side of that second one so We'll bring you along and try to point that out so you can make this trick if you want. 
But in the meantime, look at this backdrop. Big rock. But there's no way to hike through this this time of year without creating a racket with all these leaves. It's like literally a, you know, four to six inch layer of leaves. But uh, man, when you stop, you really get a sense of how still it is out here. There's nobody else out here. Super nice. Oh, except my lovely wife. There she is. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Man, that would make a really nice little camp camping area. Got a nice little water source right there. As long as you're not in the rainy season getting flooded out. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Wow, looks like there's a little cave right over there. We just came up this up this little hill here, had to cross that creek, and the the guy said that we talked to said be two little creeks. Now there there was a kind of a creek the higher up. I'm not sure if it counts, <laughs> but uh, this one was definitely one of them. But he said right after the second one, you come up and then there's a junction, which I think is where we are. So. This is the trail that I'm seeing here off to the left. I believe we're going to take. Now, just so you know, there's a pretty clear uh, rock right in the middle. And uh, over here, there's you know, another rock that's got some uh, hiking pole or trekking pole marks on it. But it looks like it kind of goes off to the left. I'm sorry, the right. And you can see that there's bark off those trees there where people are stepping over those trees. So this appears to be a feeder trail. Um, probably go that goes down to Indian Creek would be my guess. Either that or it comes up from this way, but I can't quite honestly tell. But I think we're going to take this and see where it leads. Let's do that. All right, so if this is the trail, and I'm still not 100% sure, we may have to backtrack, but if it is the trail, it just kind of follows the, the creek here and the Drainage Valley. There's these awesome rock formations over here off to the left up on the hill. So, definitely a trail. I believe at some point there should be a fallen tree we have to cross under. So that's the thing we're going to be on the lookout for. If we don't see that here in fairly short order, then, uh, up. Oh. And as I speak, I believe this may be it. A lot of fallen trees. Yeah, there's all kinds of cool crevices and stuff up there. So, yeah, so basically all I did from that other tree was I went a little bit around it to the left and there appears to be a little trail that kind of follows along the creek still. So that's what we're doing. There's a larger tree over here. So I'm going to since this is interesting, at the very least, continue following this and see where this takes us. All right, we took a vote and we agreed to just stay on the same trail we were on along the river. Because it looked like a little bit more discernible path that had been recently walked than the one that crossed the creek. So we just, uh, we came out of that big tree over there and I scrambled across some rocks over that creek. And we're in quite a nice little convergence here of canyon walls. And there we are. I do believe we found it. Powder Mill Arch. Pretty cool. All right. 
Wow. You can definitely tell this is not a sandstone arch, it's a limestone arch. So you look at the ground, it's all powdery instead of sandy. And supposedly there are some fossils in these layers, which looks like we could be, yeah, look at that. Whatever's in that layer, there's a bunch of it all along there. All right, I got 220, so it was like 105, I think, when we uh, left the road. So I think if you were able to come straight here without any stops, an hour with a easy, relaxed pace would certainly be doable. We stopped a couple times, a little bit here and there, just to uh, change layers and, and the like. So, yeah, nice. Took us an hour and 15 minutes from the 238 trailhead off of Hatton Ridge. Time for lunch. You're not pulling up that thing, are we? Yeah. Oh, how are we <laughs> Are you saying it's too much for you? I'm saying those are some slippery leaves, man. They're very slippery. Nice little cave-like thing back here. Oh, I see. That's uh, actually that is the wolf pen arch right there. I don't think we actually have to climb all the way up there. It's right. It's basically right there. That's the wolf pen in the back. What? Let's go see what's over now. So this is pretty cool. What's that, babe? So it's pretty cool. Let me put a little bit of light in here. I don't know. It's going to help all that much. Just trying to see. I can totally see him back there. Oh. Come on. Well, at least that's a plus. Is that fun dogs? Is that fun dogs? Dabby. Series, no big one. You have a good time, Chloe? You just wink at me? From right here, you'd never know we were standing on top of the arch. Some pretty cool stuff. That's the way we came down the little valley. And the arch is directly below us. Chloe's looking at me like, are you sure you're okay up there? No, I'm not going up there. Forget that. Yeah, so on that final junction, when you come up to this little fallen tree here, don't take what appears to be the trail going that way. It actually veers to the left. It might be easier to see in the summertime, but uh, it's certainly not obvious now. But follow the creek around there. You'll zigzag across the creek a couple of times, go under another larger tree. And then the arch is just straight up the valley right up there. Can't miss it. All right, well, it's three o'clock. Uh, we're going to try to make it 
as good a time as we can to get back out to the, the main road, uh, trail junction, where we'll make a left in a couple tenths of a mile. There'll be a little splitter trail off that road that goes to the right, and uh, Blackburn Vista should be not far from that. But since it's going to take us close to an hour probably to get out of here, if not a full hour, we want to get up there as quickly as we can because uh, I want to have enough daylight to put the drone up in here since that's the, really the only open place I'll be able to do that where we can still see something so that's the plan I'll keep you posted All right, that was an epic climb up out of there. We made it to Hatton Ridge Road. There's the trail sign. The car is that way, about 15 minutes. We're gonna try to visit Blackburn Vista here while we saw some daylight hours. Should be a short distance. So let's go check that out. All right, after about two tenths of a mile from that 238 trailhead, right here off to the right, You'll see the trail going off in these little pine trees. Supposedly, not far from here, the Blackburn Vista. A lot of soft pine needles blanketing the trail here. On the way to Blackburn Vista, really gives it that festive evergreen smell this time of year. You're starting to see evidence of a rock ledge here. Right through the trees. Huh. This could be pretty cool, despite the low light. Chloe. Stay here. Look at that. Come here, Dobbs. Here, buddy. All right, wow. Look at this. Definitely keep your dogs on a leash over here. Yeah, that is... That's about a 50-foot drop just to that rock, and then God knows how much further after that. Heck of a vista. <laughs> Yeah, wish it weren't so gray.
Alright, I think we got some good drone footage. And uh, pretty epic views. I wish it weren't so kind of overcast and gloomy and gray, but I think it'll look pretty good. It sure looked good on the monitor, so while I was flying. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I would say this is the most epic view in the in the gorge, but I would certainly say it is an epic view in the gorge. So um, definitely worth checking out. We got about a 20 to 30 minute hike back to the car, so we're gonna hoof it, try to get out of that long gravel road drive before it gets dark out. So. We'll see you back at the car.